Portions of the following program may be unsuitable for younger or more sensitive viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. You can put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> right? You have been sold a lie. Let me out. Let me out. The Matrix is a system, Neil. That system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! I don't know why we leave him out this high. He been good to us. He feed us on Saturday, clothes us on Sunday, and then beat us on Monday. That is the yes. most ridiculous yes. piece of philosophical bullshit I have ever heard. And the game's over when the white ball drives the black ball completely off the table. I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? We had sex with a white girl, that's what. I say, I want you. What is National Socialism? National Socialism is a philosophy or worldview. For white people, that is based on three principles. One, natural order. They believe that the universe is governed by natural laws. In order for man to be happy and successful, he must first learn what these laws are and then follow them. They believe that man is a part of the natural world and that he is in no way separate or distinct from it. Consequently, they believe that society should be structured in accordance with the law of nature and not in opposition to them as is the case today. Under National Socialism, every aspect of society will be in accord with the natural order, the way they structure the government the way they raise their children, the way they plan their cities, the way they grow their food, everything. Indeed, in this context, National Socialism is the original green movement. Two, racial idealism. Racial idealism is based on the love of your own people. It means placing the welfare and interests of the racial community to which you belong ahead of your own personal interests and desires. As racial idealists, we or they have no wish to harm, persecute, control, or exploit other racial groups. They are only interested in protecting their own people. They believe that all men are not created equal. Just as every individual has his own personal strengths and weaknesses, so each race certain qualities that make it different from other races. They believe that the white or Aryan race has the right to maintain its biological, cultural, and political independence and that it has the right to control its own destiny. They also believe that white people have the right to defend themselves against all attacks no matter where they come from. Three, the upward development of the white race. They want to do more than just defend their race. They want to see it improved. This can be done by encouraging a high birth rate among those whites who are the healthiest, strongest, and most intelligent. 
At the same time, science should work to eliminate hereditary weaknesses and defects among their people. Their goal is that each new generation of white children will be better off than the one before it. Hey, hey, how's y'all doing? This is your Whiteologist 2017, y'all. Welcome to 2017. That's right, I'm back again, y'all. That's right. Dropping the news, the spin, the underline, the reverse psychology, whether it be global, national, international, continentally, but especially here in America. That's right, y'all. Mr. Blows Your Mind back with another thought-provoking topic. Well, it's 2017. For a lot of us who made it through that 2016 was a rough year. A lot has happened. A lot of people have passed on and are still going to continue to pass on. But 2016 was a year to put a check mark in your mind as to all the things that have taken place. Now, we in 2017, as the future is presenting itself, a new foundation has been set in this country. And we are, at this present day, two weeks away, less than two weeks away of the inauguration of this new foundation. It's always, it's really an old foundation, but it has reared its head again. And so what ended up happening is we're going to have to show our understanding about the situations and how do we prepare our minds for all the things that are going to transpire for the next four years. Well, believe it or not, a lot of people shun the fact when it comes to race. And now that they have seen that the country has set up its administration to be the catalyst for a lot of the stuff that is going to transpire. The numbers in itself in the election let you know where the people stood, right? Even though a lot of people will assume that the people that they're socialized with are people who have good intent, good means, but just was tired of seeing the face of the country that they so beloved not being one of their own. So when we look at it in that aspect and realize that if a people who's supposed to be the major population who believe that the way that they have captured a country and then when the face of the country or the leader of the country does not reflect them, look how they as a nation of people responded. Look at the underlying tone of the spirit of a lot of the people, I won't say all of them, but a lot of them could not take the image that was being portrayed of the country as a black country. Not that it was populated as a black country, but the face of the head was black. So from the day that he got into office, they worked in the background to get this set up. So when a lot of people who looked at this election and thought that the president-elect was the worst choice to be representing the Republicans versus a seasoned veteran, it seemed like it was an obvious easy win. But you mistaken when you don't understand how they play the game. And so today I present to you what they call the three principles. Okay? And once you understand these three principles, understand the motivation, the stance, and the thought pattern of the people who are under the umbrella of this national thought. Now, as I start off, as you heard me read about what is national socialism, right? It says that it's a philosophy of a worldview, right? That white people 
base these three principles as, as I go through this dissertation. We're on the verge of a system that is going to rear back to a time where many of us who try to find a way to say that because people who do give reverence to our ancestors of the past and will continue to advocate on behalf of the history of the wrongdoings that they say that we are victims or victimized thinkers and stay muddling in the past. Well, to each his own as into the thought that he or she has as into whether they believe that or not. But some things never change. A leopard, they say, never changes its spots. A zebra never changes its stripes. Right? So with that being said, whatever was the founding foundation to something is what it is. Now, a lot of people are not going with it because they believe in evolving into a higher civilized people, being, and nation. I'm not against that. Not at all. What I'm saying is that a system has been implemented. There have been support around the nation. Moves are being made. People are being put in positions. Agendas are being set. Uh, there are certain propagandas that are being reiterated over and over again as part of the Catalyst move they're going to be making. And for a lot of us who are not looking at it, you need to understand where they're coming from. Now, one, it says it talked about natural order, right? Natural order, right? That's just, just the way things is. That is just the way it has been set up from whoever designed it, whoever created it. The way that it goes, it is the natural order of things, right? And it goes on and says that they believe that the universe is governed by natural laws. No right thinking person would say they disagree with that. Because most people, whether they're in the thought of an atheist, what the, the definition that the general definition that most people interpret in their minds as into what is an atheist. The atheist doesn't believe because what he don't see. Even if you say science, even when you break it down, you still have to come to the notion what made it and put it there. You understand? I'm going to say that again. Even though a person who claims to be an atheist, whether they want to use it in the etymological way, the origin way, the, the concept way, they may say, I need something tangible which needs to be touched, held, seen. But they may believe in science. But the evidence of the same person who created the nature of that science still fingerprint shows it exists. Even when you break it down to the atoms and cells and going further down, you still have to say who still originated that. So that who created the natural laws right, of the universe, they say is the all. Some people call it God. Some says the force, right? There's other terminologies out here of how people will interpret what they mean by that. So they believe, right? But they're not the only ones who believe. Primarily the whole world believes, right? That this universe is governed by natural laws, right? And the one who created and designed set up a natural order. Now, if this is part of the decree of the three principles, then we have to ask ourselves, natural order, are you going to obey the natural order? Or do you need to reconstruct it to fit your agenda? You need to put the square peg in the round hole and make it logically fit the agenda you need as we go on. It says they believe 
that man is a part of the natural world, right? And in no way he's separate or distinct from it. Hmm. You can get into a deep philosophical conversation if you get into the concepts of man, mankind, and human. See, there's a concept that most people have been taught to believe that we're all the same. But the wordings tell you when you say man, mankind, and human are three distinct different species, if you want to call it that, right? So, when you have a general understanding about things, you will lump all three as one. But these people are telling you distinctly they are different in the aspect, but they say they are not distinct from the natural world. The person who created the natural world had his natural, his or her, depending, right? Natural order. What is he or she's design? And what is the natural state of it? Right? So they say man is a part of the natural world. Everybody who is on this planet is a part of the natural world. There's no doubt about that. The question becomes, is man in the natural order of the process of the one who designed it is the question here. And if them doing their studies and have gone through all of antiquities, you know, philosophies and sciences and have come to a conclusion in their search to find that maybe someone did not fit in the natural order of that process of the original designer, the architect. So he has to say there's no way he's separate or distinct from it because there's something wrong here that they're not going to actually say openly. But they will make you in the concept of their, as we go on, the things they have set up will make you think that everything is equal. They believe that society should be structured in accordance with the laws of nature. Who has a disagreement with that? No one will disagree. It isn't just you who think that. The whole globe does. But the, pro the problem here is, is the whole world able to have its input as to where it visions, it sees, and what it, it can have its own idealism a part of it? Or is it is a unilateral people who have put their concept and ideals and thoughts and worldview upon the whole nation? We have to be real about this. It's 2017, y'all. Right? So, they believe that society should be structured. Well, you know what a structure is. The thing you're in right now. Right? The house you're in. The car you may be in. Right? Even in this internet etheric world, there's a structure to it. Right? And in these structures, everything operates according to a certain law that makes it operate. Right? So no one is against the accordance of the law. But those laws are infallible because that is how things operate. But when someone can manipulate what they call man-made laws to fit a certain type of agenda... Is that part of the natural order? Is what you have to ask yourself. Is that part of the natural order? Or is that the menu of the day? Okay? So this structure that they're talking about. This is what's going to formulate the whole world under its mindset. How it views. What is their philosophy? Right? 
And anything outside of it would be in opposition to it. Right? Anything that doesn't go in the scheme, in the flow, in the direction of how they structure will always be in opposition. So when a people who think like that as kind of a narcissistic way of looking, then you have to ask yourself, can you be flawed is another thing. Are you flawed in any aspect that you feel that you are so perfect to the fact that you're non-flawed as a to the, your worldview, your ideal, your concepts, your worldview? Can you be wrong and still keep going down this path? Hmm? So they says that under this national socialism, every aspect of society will be in accord, right? With the natural law. Now, how, who gave the manifest destiny stamp of approval that when you say we as in you have the authority to make sure that all societies will be in accord under the natural order the problem is when you say the term natural order who are we talking about are we talking about the all or we're talking about the structure construct of man and his ideal of natural order that for him to stay in the relevant position that he's in all must stay in the accord of what he has laid down is that how it works is this how everybody sees it and if you don't you are in opposition to it see they say the way they structure the government right not the way that we have learned those who do study and that the imitation of government comes from what they believe was said in biblical as into the structure tiers as you say seraph right the the level tiers of angels right and the trillions of trillions of billions of people that stood before the one that sit it on the throne so there is a re replication of what they believe government to be there's nothing wrong in that but there could there be something wrong in the concept and the agenda and the biasness of the people who rule why is it that the world cries about the disparity of inequality if that's not the case why do the people bemoan and 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 howl and all these cries of injustices if we're going to talk about natural order but I know the concept that most of us have because majority of people come out of a public school system and so because of that public school system thought they're going to have a mediocre way of thinking and not understand the true concept of where these people are coming from so this government structure will implement laws, statutes, and commands, but they will always fall particular in a biased way towards one and lenient towards another. But we say this is of the natural order. Could be, it depends on your interpretation. You can say that God chooses one and damns the other. We could say that, we could write that, and in some ways when we look at it in a world view, we see that. But is that really the all, or is that the structure of the construct of this government globally that has set this up? Is a question you have to ask yourself. So it says that the way they raise their children, as if other people way of raising children is inadequate they have an agenda when they raise their children is what they're saying that they have a goal they have a mindset and a worldview so when you think that when you 
who hear me, who are older and have children and grandchildren, and your children have this fantasy island mentality as a utopian world holding hands, it's a great concept when you think about it, that everybody gets along holding hands and that's just what it is. But the reality of it is, they're telling you. They structured their children in a mindset. Yes, when you go to school with them, those who may be younger who are hearing, when you're young and you are soft clay, you have none of these so-called concepts in your mind. And as children who are innocent and play, you play with anybody who's willing to play what you're doing. That is just natural, right? The natural order. But as those children grow up and as they mature more about society and the world's view and what their parents have been inculcating in them, those who will hear me who have had friends of other persuasions as you were coming up, did you have different paths later on as you got older? The same people who you knew when you were younger when you were innocent as a child and you played friends and was associates and classmates, you now who are older, are you still in contact with the same people or have they diverted and went in other directions? Somebody who you once crossed paths with. Hmm? So there's a ideal idolism inculcated in different nationalities that they raise with a concept of the nation that they're coming from, and that is the gender and goal that you must go. So when another people who are in the lower echelons of life, the only concept they got is a biblical one that has told them that everybody loves everybody, which makes you in a defenseless state. Because you believe that everybody loves everybody, and you advocate for everybody else's agenda, but no one ever comes to say openly that we're fighting for you. Why is that? Because they raise their children with that concept of what is important. What is the agenda of our nation? So they say the way they plan their cities. See? Hmm? Like Orange Juice Jones said, you just a squirrel in my world trying to get a nut. You don't own anything. You even may own some property. You may even have a business. But we own the cities that you reside and dwell in. So the way they plan will go fruition. What you plan doesn't matter. That's why they have eminent domain as part of the requisite in real estate, right? That's part of it. That you as an owner knows that when the city decided it wants to put something that it deems to be in its agenda, you're going to take what we give you and be gone, right? So that shows the power of this structured thing that they call government, right? The way they grow their food, right? A lot of people don't even understand the concept of this. They think that when you go to the nearest food chain in your community, that the same food that you get in the community that you live in, the predominant of the nation that you are in, that every other people are getting the same food. The problem is most people don't even recognize that food trucks, distribution companies, are all around these nations and when you have worked in the field of let's say shipping and receiving you know that things are shipped according to docks and dot in 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 the doctrines and serial numbers has spe specified destinations and only the people who created whatever the food stuff may be know exactly what that is. Are this, you know, 
are certain areas targeted to give certain types of foods and waters and you know it's like you can go in the hoods and you can get all that hot everything you get is some kind of hot right hot chips hot corn chips hot, you know all this hot peanuts right but if you went into some of these other communities you can't find the stuff that you get why is certain stuff specified for you and if you've been around long enough you remember when red number seven remember when they had to take that off when you couldn't get a red m&m anymore because there was something in the dye that they were using in the thread number seven that was a causing cancer. But when we look in the hoods, we see plenty of that red stuff in the hoods. Am I lying? So the green movement as into the food and how they doing their things, they can specify what they want. They have the power to determine. See, they'll say stuff like people will advocate and talk about, let's say, what's happening in Detroit, right, with the water, right? As if, like, that's an isolated incident only pertaining to them individuals in Detroit. If we were to check all the waters in all the chocolate cities of the predominant areas where the nation of black people are at, test the waters because even they had said that in the school system that they were getting lead in the water that they had this notion to talk about it but they try to isolate it to only the school water now how is that possible when the school is in a community and it's just like the water pipe of the school is different from all the rest of the communities hmm hmm food for you to think about. Two, they talked about racial idolism. The love of your own people. That concept in our nation is hard for the simple fact that you know I showed one time in a video where I showed you those who seen the movie The Matrix. And you've seen that scene when Neo was fighting all of those agents, right? It was just unlimited of agents. No matter how many he kicked down, one was getting up. To the fact that he had to fly up out of there because it was even overbearing for this godlike individual that it was overbearing for even him. So when you look at us as a nation and understanding the way that we're fighting, right? You're being bombarded from so many different ways because you don't understand the concept of what this is talking about. And so when you're fighting all that and then you have these internal fights and then you have the psychological wars that are amongst us, how do a people can even have a moment of thought, of clarity to have love for his own people when it's constantly at battle and war? And so it it's a, has a hair trigger when it comes to anger, you know, feelings, emotions. It's hair triggered because you're constantly at war, right? So the concept of a nation is to love your own people. People are going to keep using the callus of Chicago to really... Put the flashlight or the light, shine the light on to show as this is the foundation of all people of this nation under that nation. When this is a underline of systemicness to some other facets of war that no one has detected yet. But on the premise of face, it looks as the culprit. See, let me say this. You know, you'll have some people who will constantly keep sitting here and saying that you people are keep wanting to be blaming white folks for all the things that's going wrong with you. So let me ask this question. 
So, a people who, we're going to take the timeline of 1619 and then take 1865 as the emancipation supposedly has happened. How much time is from 19, from 1619 to 1865, right? About 246 years. So people who have been in the most atrocious, uh, 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 well, most atrocious, diabolical, Unhumane, any whatever you can lump, whatever one word can define all that, then to be so called emancipated 246 years later, we are only in 2017, which is how many years from 1865? Huh? About 152 years. So you got 264. Of gen then you got about let's say thirty years of generations. Let's say a generation is thirty years. We're talking about eight and a half generations of people who went from sixteen nineteen to eighteen sixty five, and then how many generations are from eighteen sixty five to two thousand seventeen, which is one hundred fifty years? We're only talking about five generations. You got eight generations who were in that one aspect and you only had five generations and of that five generations of people who were part of coming out of the 1865 people, part of that five generation is still trying to wear off what had happened eight generations before and you're saying that what has happened today has nothing to do with the systemicness of what happened in the past? Y'all need to stop talking like that. That's your problem. You want to try to talk about we need to do this for our own self. These people who are out here call themselves clinical psychologists. If you ask them, a person who has been enduring what the, our ancestors endured 264 years ago, I mean, for 264 years from 1619 to 1865, what would a clinical psychologist say what would be needed to help because you're not even going to get all eight generations. You're probably going to get seven and eight, right? You possibly get seven and eight. You're not going to get one, two, three, four, and five. They're probably already gone. But you're going to probably maybe get six and seven, right? You, you possibly to get six and seven, maybe not even six, more seven and eight, right? So what would a clinical psychologist have to deal with the people who coming out of 1865 and how long of treatment and what kind of um, medications and, and 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 therapy would a person like that need? So say they didn't get that. They didn't get that. And we're not going to say all of them because we know that, again, you got to remember the time. Those of us. Now, see, this is the problem. This is the distinction between the two. And I'm trying not to do that because I'm trying to bring us to think together. But we have to understand the time and where it will happen. In that particular time, there was two. There was the ones that could pass. Now, the ones that could pass got the potential to be able to be highly more educated than the one that could not pass. But the predominant could not pass is the more, you know, foundation of the number compared to the ones that could pass that started with their ancestors who had education and went on forward. But the other aspect of that, who didn't get any treatment, who still had to go through the Jim Crows, who still was fighting for the civil rights in the 60s, when did they ever get healed? So how can we move forward when you have people who are in genetic, because the question you have to ask yourself to a clinical psychiatrist, does the sickness of mental, of an individual, of that prolonged of generations, does it now, is it in the genetics? Because when I did the story about that George Soros, he said that his family had when he talked about he was madness, he said madness did run rampant in his family and he does have some madness. So if he is saying this, then 
we can't say that either. And then again, all these other fights that are happening when people are chemically inducing you. They're putting stuff in your alcohol. They're putting stuff in your food. They're spraying stuff in the air. That you live in places that are blood ridden. You're getting inferior education. You think this isn't a Molokot cocktail for what you're seeing out here? And you think that the only way that you're going to deal with it is to purge it out? And you can only talk about you, 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 and look at the other people as looking at their less and barbaric and savage people when no one will, don't want to connect the dots and say, we don't want to keep talking about that. I'm going to keep talking about that. Now, placing the welfare and interests of the racial community to which you belong ahead of your own and personal interests and desires. That stuff, that is another why that is so hard amongst us. That's why you have only so handful of us who are advocating, trying to bring some you know, awareness, bring back some love, culture to the communities and any, as any aspect of facet that you are out here doing whatever kind of work. I don't belittle nobody's work. You know why? There is no one way to do this. You can't just say because you are out on the street. Well, you have an institution and you, everybody has to be a part of this in whatever form, fashion that you can, you know, contribute. Everything. When you talk about a car to the lowest spot, to a little spring, to a little washer, it's all intricate parts on something that operates. We don't, we don't look at one greater than the other. And people have a tendency to try to put themselves and elevate themselves like they better than. Stop it. Stop it. People have to learn to understand that the welfare and the condition that our people have. And have to learn this. Everybody on the Zoom, because I, I, let, let me say, I'm going to say this for the record. I'm tired of hearing people saying, we've been talking so long. I just gave you the story. 1619 will be your marker. From 1619 to 1865 is 264 years. You are 2017, making 152 years from 1865. From, 19, from 1619 to, uh, to 1865 is about eight and a half generations. From 1865 to now, we've only, if we're going to use 30 as a generation count, you only had five generations, and part of your five generations are still attributed deeply more to what happened eight and a half. So when you talk about we're talking because our people don't understand, and y'all want to keep acting and talking that nonsense, shut your mouth because you don't know what you're talking about. It sounds good, talking in action. You can build all you want, but if those people sick, if your people sick and don't understand, and can't come together, then what, what, what are you building? Paper machés. That shit is paper. It's going to fall. You're going to have to now go and gut and build a new foundation because your foundation ain't even good. And you're going to try to build on foundation just because you know. Just because you've been so-called um, conscious for 30, 40 years. There's many more people out here who are not conscious than the people who are conscious. And in this thing, you're going to need them. You can't separate one without the other. But that's what y'all want to do. You want to try to act as if like you, you the grand, <laughs> Ryan to say like a grand wizard. Right? You're trying to be distinct in this uh, distinction as if only with you in this class. And, and I only talk in the level that I speak at you because of people who understand. Well, let me tell you something. There ain't no need for you talking to people who already understand it. You need to be talking to people who don't understand it. But, you know, you know. That's belittling yourself, right? So they don't understand the personal interest. Right now, that shameful thing that has happened, that they're trying to do. Where the four little brothers and sisters who went out there and did what they did with the disabled white boy. Now, I, I, again, I'm not trying to advocate to say that they're they're not wrong. But see, when you see in that, and they don't even understand that they're doing something in that capacity, if you're going to do something like that, why would you put it on Facebook? But see, there's no rearing and no structure. A lot of that has been lost. And people want to talk this high 
high spiritual, high educated stuff when people don't even have the root, grassroots basic information. If you're going to help them, that's how you're going to do it. All this other stuff you're talking about, that's, that's just, it's not even worthy of it. You're just talking over people's head. And then you isolate yourself not being around them. And this is the crux of your nation. We have no wish to harm, persecute, control, exploit other racial groups. You know that's a damn lie by them. You have no wish to harm. What the, the damage has already been done since 1619. The damage is done. And the people who are fighting trying to break that cycle and come with a different mindset and yet still fighting, you're seeing the residuals of that. And then you see these pockets of people who are trying to be conscious and trying to elevate themselves and teach love and health and all this stuff. And that scares you because if they could ever connect to the other ones, right, then that's going to be a problem. Persecute. You may not do it the way you did it at one particular time, riding on horses and burning flags and uh, I mean burning crosses and houses. You use what you said, structure and law. Right? You use that now. Control or exploit? Well, the control is in the law. The control is in the education. The control is in the manipulation and fear. Right? Exploit? Well, how come, how is it that people of color who bring more to the table as to the things that, uh, that would actually give the nation a lot of economical power but other people exploit them and get reaps the benefits. If the people are not exploiting other racial groups, it's like you having a farm system, right? It's like having the D League, right? Having the these farming systems that have a pool of talent. And when one rises to the top, you can go in there, grab it, and bring it, and you will promote him, make him famous. His name will be a household name. He'll have some better trinkets than the average, but he will not reap the most out of his own talent. Or his own people don't get to harness him and then use it to facilitate for it in his own nation. But they'll say that how much you have contributed and without you, we can't survive, which is the biggest lie that's ever been told. Protecting our own people, they say. Right? Their interest only is to protect their own people. Every, everybody has should have that right. That's not solely to you. That's not only classified to you. If we're going to talk about natural order of things. But what happens when the person who is talking about protecting their own lives or the nation that is talking about protecting their own lives is manipulating things to coerce things, to entice things, and make it seem to be you when really it's you behind the scene. So, you know, they say point your finger at somebody, three is point back at you, right? But there's no guilt here, and there is no you in our reasons of our struggle. Okay, so they believe that all men are not created equal. We know that. We understand that. In some aspects of things of life, everybody is not equal. Not everybody can be articulate. Not everybody has the capacity to evaluate, you know, analytically. Everybody is not a, you know, professorship of scholar or Edward of professors, right? Those type of things, right? We understand that. But on the basic fundamentals of what we said, as you say earlier in this, as man, mankind, and human, that is equality when you look at it from that aspect. As you say that no one, no way separate or distinct from the natural world. But that's not the point. The point is, is you, 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 there is no equality because you don't see equality in other people because you see yourself greater than everybody else. And that's a fallacy in that because you really purport 
a falsity. If you really want to be honest about it. Right? So, so, according to this, it said that, so each race certain qualities that make it different from other races. Now, the qualities that you talk about are primarily individuals. It's kind of like when, um, I don't know if it was Paul Mooney or was it Dave Chappelle that had the joke that talked about, we, 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 we could do this. Ah, you over there, you just go make the plane. Well, you just go make the plane. And, and, and you over there, you, right? You could just pick any individual could do anything. So you assessing the individuality in your nation to encompass the whole nation. Well, let's see. Let's take it this way. If that be the case, you're not superior to us as people of color. That would be a lie. You may talk about the now and say, well, we don't talk about the past, but the past is your foundation. The problem with the past of the people of the color is the people who will call themselves modern, the now nationalists today, who don't want to talk about the past because in the past, where were your position, right? And what did you have to do in order to get into the position? So you have stunted the growth of the people who were already civilized before you to bring them into a barbaric state so you have created an unbalanced unequalness in the people who used to be and will always be your gods I'm going to say that again based on going back from the foundation to who was civilized first and who had to come in and had to do what they had to do in order to get into the position they had these are your guys, and this is why we get the flat that we get. Because we are their guys. But you have debauched the God of this planet to a debauched state. Not on his own cognizance. There are some people out here who, who just they just bad seeds. But as a collective whole, if there was no structured of your so-called laws of nature. Or your natural law. We could break that glass ceiling easy. But you don't want to compete on an even level. Because it would be like when they had Boat was going to run against one of, I don't know, it was a newscaster. And he, he was running his hardest. Boat was just like, man, I ain't really trying to race you. There's, you ain't on my level. You know we're not on the same level. But you have to keep purporting yourself in a way to make it seem like you're small superior but you won't openly say all the things that you're doing as manipulating to keep mugs from actually elevating and then those people of our people who are the carrot in front of the horse dangle them in front of the people who have potential and say you can obtain to be like them but they tell you how much weight they're putting on the back of that carriage and how that horse is straining trying to obtain that carrot hmm? so it goes on says the white or airy race has the right to maintain its biological cultural political independence this white Aryan thing it's a myth you know in the Aryans when the white folks and yet y'all still keep saying that how, wh where is the natural white race? How come you still have not pinpoint the exact origin and location where you come from? Because it don't happen. It don't, it's just a figment of the imagination. It is the cannon fodder to the psychology to build one up. It's like getting, it, it was like in that fight that you just seen with Ronda Rousey and Nunez. Oh, when she was in that corner. And the way they hyped her all up, right? They hyped that girl up, had her all on TV, and she the runner up. She ain't even the champion. But all because she's, I'm a real American, right? Had her propped her up, blowing her head up. And Nunez went in there and popped that head in 48 seconds. And that girl was putting it on her. See, that's how y'all is. And the problem is, you as a nation of people have not even realized that that's what your forefathers have done to you. They have 
done you the same way they done with Ronda Rousey. They put all this stuff in your head. They tell you how great you is. And they got you so filled with all this. And then when you get into the real fight, you find out, I ain't all that. That's what's done happen here. But you ain't going to never admit it. Because you feel like you need that in order to survive. You need to feel superior. Even though that you feel that way in the way that things have been structured in the way that people of color live, but they know. People of color know they're smarter than you. People of color know they are actually tougher than you. People of color know that, but they have a better condition of heart. They are better humanity than you. You might have material money, corporations, but humanity as a person, as an individual, not the ones that you have made sick. But there's more of us. Even those people, let's take, even those people have the tendency to, even when you're around you, you feel comfortable that you know they won't hurt you. So how can he be a total barbarian when he see you, he still have a humanity in him because of that program you put in him. So that's in him. But you have taught him to hate his own people. You have made him self-internalize and hate himself. But you can't admit that. And you won't admit that. You let the people keep going on thinking that it's them that they did this to themselves. And you will keep going with your lie of the myth of somebody ancient. There is no antiquity when it comes to you. That's why everything is modern and trying to be greater than and talk about the now. Because if you go back to the foundation, you're nowhere to be found. Hmm? The right to control its own destiny. Everybody should have that right. Not just you. All people have the right to control their own destiny. Regardless to race, creed, and color. As you say, E-O-E. But that's not true, is it? Because it's under this structure of this natural law by the nationalist white supremacists, right? And the clandestineness of those who say, I'm not with them, but show them vote, show, show something entirely different. Because the thing that, the mystery to the whole thing is, if we're going to say that he end up still winning the popular, right? Then you have to ask yourself, if they were to take a public viewing of each person who voted, would you consent to being putting your face out here so everybody can see? And you and the thing it's not so much about shaming, it's like some of the people that you would see that who voted for them, you would be surprised that they voted because you would have thought that's not them. You have the right to choose who you want to choose. I'm not against that. I, mean, I ain't even. I don't even trip about that. It's just the fact that trying to act that this something is not what it is. That's the problem, and you're making more people sick with that, right? So white people have the right to defend themselves against all attacks, no matter where they come from. Don't all people have that? It's only classified only to you and yours, but not nobody else. Everybody else don't have the right to defend themselves. Obviously, they don't because it makes it so strenuous and hard for certain people of certain ethnicities to bear arms. They have to go through hoops, jump through a box, uh, juggle fire. You understand? Put their mouth in a, a gr uh, in a grizzly bear's mouth. They do all these things trying to jump in the hoop to have ways to defend themselves. And who are they defending themselves? Why is it that the gun sales for black people have risen lately? But yet, black people live in the so-called racks of America, but they didn't go buy guns to go kill their own people. Black people want to buy guns to protect themselves against whom? Why are they buying guns? They've been living in the Iraqs, right? All over this nation, but they, the gun sales didn't go up because of that. But because of this administration that's coming in that is fearing a lot of black people, they felt like they needed to go buy weaponry. Why is that? Who do they need to protect themselves from? What has, we can use chronology of history that shows when this element is there, that there is a history that ties into that. That's why they went and did it, right? 
So they said the upward development of the white race just defends our race. Not just they just do more to just defend their race. They want to improve it. All people want to do that. Everybody wants to improve their race. The problem is black people or people of color don't have the destiny to control. Not because they don't want to. One, they've been deprived because they haven't been able to get the people who could because they already made allegiance in other places. So they stayed in a hamster in a wheel position, right? So they can't really improve unless other people who have gotten to certain levels come back and help to improve. But a lot of times they're not because contractual obligations, image, associations will taint them and they don't want that either, right? So everybody wants not just to defend their race, they want to improve, right? They want to be a higher civilized people. They want to be highly spiritual and they want peace, right? They said they're encouraging a high birth rate among those whites who are the healthiest, strongest, and most intelligent. There's an agenda for that. We understand why you do that. And I guess that could be a prerequisite. But again, if that who created natural order, the one who created natural law, does, did, does he or she state this, right? Healthiest, strongest, and most intelligent? Or is that people fall in love and things happen? Now, yes, education would help a lot of that. There is beneficial, there is a benefit in healthy, strong, and intelligent people and making, creating new ones. There is benefits in that, and we understand that. But the people who've been deprived educationally, who've been given, you know, a century behind in education in the public school or public food system that you give them, and then you expect them to be on par with you, supposedly as you are a high civilized barbaric people, right? And you, these people are misinformed, miseducated, and, and, and come out of poverty written, stricken environments. They're only going to breed and cohabitate in the environment that they're in and under the understanding that they know. Science should work to eliminate hereditary weaknesses and defect among our people. Shouldn't that be for all people? Why is it only exclusively to you? That science is used to eradicate, to strengthen you, to work to eliminate hereditary weaknesses. Why only you? Why isn't science just, that's what it does. For any people who will take, uh, you know, who will take the prescriptions of it, who will follow the science and the methods and uh, the medicinals and all that stuff that goes according to with science to make you a more healthy and better person. Why is it only towards you? Right? And of course, last and not least, better off than the ones before it. Well, with all that fighting that the people of color have to go through, it's any wonder, when you talk about seven wonders of the world, the eighth wonder of the world is the black American. The black American is the eighth wonder of the world because of the conditions that he has to or she has to go through on day in, day out, month, weekly, monthly, yearly, you understand? Decade, centennial, half, you know, bicentennial. All that that he goes through, they go through, we go through. We are the eighth wonders of the world. And even though that you're doing all the stuff that you're doing to so-called facilitate and structure and defend and improve, what would we be if we were in the position that you are doing? <laughs> no contest. Well, this is Mr. Blow Your Minds. Wanted to bring something to you. 2017, y'all. Hold on, this gonna be a this gonna be one scary roller coaster.
Thank you.